everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Lily, aka Lily Koi Hawaii. I make videos about health and wellness from diets and exercise and other lifestyle factors to emotional health and happiness and self-acceptance and even a few beauty videos thrown in there for good measure. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding the little bell so you can stay up to date with my videos. On the agenda for today, we got another short and sweet Q&A video, so make sure you get any more questions that you may have for me down below, and I will put it on the list. Last week, I was asked if I could do a short and sweet Q&A video about artificial sweeteners, and I am happy to oblige. And the majority of the information in this video was covered in these four books, Becoming Vegan, Gut Bliss, The Evolution of Obesity, and How Not to Die. So when I think of artificial sweetener, the first thing that comes to my mind is like aspartame and which are found in additive products like Sweet and Low and Equal, but these artificial sweetening chemicals have found their way into all kinds of processed foods like cereals and yogurts and obviously the ubiquitous sugar-free gum, as well as their prolific use throughout the diet soda industry. So this class of artificial sweeteners, I, I really just have to say like, just, just don't do it. These chemicals have been associated with fibromyalgia, headaches, pregnancy issues, increased risk of cancers, as well as hypertension, brain disorders, including depression and irritability, even on low doses. And they've even been implicated in the development of colitis or inflammation in your gut. There has been a fair amount of research done on these types of artificial sweeteners since the 80s because of all of the kind of strange side effects that are anecdotally reported from so many people who consume them. And many of those studies have been industry funded, which means that the results that end up coming in about their safety has been mixed at best. But as you know, I feel like I say this every video, I am a better safe than sorry kind of girl. And so in this case, I never consume these types of artificial sweeteners. And I mean, I would suggest that nobody consume them. Another type of really popular artificial sweetener are the sugar alcohols. Now sugar alcohols are not calorie free, but because of the way that they're digested and broken down, they are much less calorically dense than say sugar. They include substances like sorbitol, xylitol, and erythritol. I keep wanting to call it urethritol, and I like I know that that's not right, but it's just what my mouth wants to do. Erythritol, er erythritol. So especially with sorbitol and xylitol, if you consume a significant amount of them, they can actually draw a lot of uh, water into your colon and end up giving you some, some uh, diarrhea issues, which you might want to avoid for obvious reasons. Erythritol seems not to cause that issue with drawing water into the colon, so it is considered to be more safe. It's even so safe that Dr. Greger recommends using it in small amounts in order to encourage the consumption of other types of really healthy foods. However, Dr. Robin Chutkan, a gastroenterologist who wrote Gut Bliss, she advises against the consumption of all sugar alcohols, as they make it through the digestive tract largely undigested and unabsorbed. That's why they don't contribute much calorically, but once they're inside the colon, they are fermented by the bacteria in your colon. During that fermentation process, a lot of excess gases are produced, and those gases lead to gas and significant bloating. Also, because of the way that they feed specific types of bacteria, those sugar alcohols can contribute to eventual gut dysbiosis or overgrowth of unwanted species of gut bacteria. Now, xylitol has been found to be strengthening of dental enamel, so you do tend to see it in a lot of tooth-related products, especially natural products like toothpaste and gums. I've seen it in mouthwash and floss and stuff. And you know, if you have a lot of problems with severe bloating, I would say to be really wise about your consumption there. But otherwise, if you want to choose some xylitol sweetened gum or 
use xylitol mouthwash or toothpaste, I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. Another artificial sweetener that we've probably all heard of is stevia. And stevia is a plant, right? So it has to be healthy and wonderful for you. Well, studies are mixed. There's some studies that show that it's really, you know, highly protective against things like uh, cancer and hypertension and metabolic diseases. But then there are some studies that show that it's not protective against those. And one of the active ingredients of stevia is broken down into steviol, which could increase the amount of mutagenic DNA damage that is done in your body. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really down for mutagenic DNA damage inside my colon. <laughs> I'll pass. You know, the World Health Organization said that you can consume like 1.8 milligrams per pound of body weight per day without any real ill effect from the steviol breakdown. But, you know, I'm not really the type of girl that's like down for risking mutagenic DNA damage, so... I personally will be avoiding the stevia, which pretty much means that I avoid all artificial sweeteners full stop, because you know, you guys know me, like I do my best to eat an, an unprocessed whole plant food diet and these things, they have it in their name, they're artificial. The primary reason that someone would want to eat artificial sweeteners is to try to lower their caloric intake. You know, you're trying to avoid the caloric intake that's associated with sugar or other sweeteners and you're trying to probably avoid, you know, the spike in insulin that is associated with other sugars, which leaves your body more prone to weight gain. Logically, that should work, right? That makes total sense. You're eating fewer calories, you should end up losing weight, right? Unfortunately, studies have not shown that people consuming artificial sweeteners lose any more weight than people who just eat sugar. In fact, people consuming artificial sweeteners instead of just sugar tend to actually gain more weight. And while the exact mechanisms for that aren't exactly pinned down and known for sure, there are some really good theories about it and the speculation is pretty solid. So first, artificial sweeteners tend to have a, a negative effect on appetite control. We don't really know for sure if it's how it affects the brain, like in the prefrontal cortex, maybe it's inhibiting some of our um, control over our actions. Or it could be an overcompensation effect where, you know, I drink this artificially sweetened sugar-free beverage and I think, okay, well, you know, since that had no calories, I can go ahead and eat a little bit more for lunch. That's what studies have shown is that people who consume either like cereal that has artificial sweeteners or artificially sweetened beverages, they tend to purposefully consume more food later in the day. They also tend to exhibit a little bit less control over what they consume when cravings strike. And that's part of another issue with the artificial sweeteners, is that when something is artificially sweetened, we get used to a very, very sweet taste. And so our bodies become conditioned to expect that sweetness, and it keeps us constantly craving that sweetness. And if we're consuming like the sugar alcohols, which are metabolized in the gut, then those gut bacteria eating those sugar alcohols are gonna make you want it even more. Your microbiome affects your cravings. The other issue is that when we were evolving, our bodies weren't used to artificial sweeteners. If we tasted something sweet, it indicated that we were taking in some form of sugar. And so over millennia of evolution, our physiology as animals evolved so that when we taste sweet, our body has a response to that. And part of that response is a surge in insulin. So even when we have an artificially sweetened, calorie-free, sugar-free beverage, let's say, our bodies acknowledge that there's sugar coming in, we gotta get ready for it. And so our bodies begin excreting insulin. However, there's no sugar there. No sugar makes it into our bloodstream to work with that insulin and get ferried into our cells. And no calories are registered, which leaves our bodies really confused. Now let's say we have that artificially sweetened, zero calorie, zero sugar beverage with a meal. Our bodies end up excreting an extra high amount of insulin, which leads to more fat storage. So if you're having your Coke Zero with a Big Mac, you're kind of screwing yourself even more. 
So since no class of artificial sweeteners are, you know, like guaranteed 100% safe that we know of, what should we do instead? It's well recommended and well known that if we eat less sweet foods, our taste buds become more sensitive to sweet tastes. So if we're not eating either sugar sweetened or artificially sweetened foods or beverages, our bodies will get used to foods not tasting so sweet and we'll actually lose our love of super sweet foods. So simply eliminating most processed sugar and artificial sweeteners from your diet and being patient is a really great way to solve the whole problem of safe sweeteners. If you don't want them, if you don't need them, you don't have to consume them, and you don't have to face the consequences of their consumption. If you guys watch a lot of my videos, you probably know that I don't tend to use a lot of processed sugars. Uh, the sweeteners that I do use are blackstrap molasses, date sugar, I do have coconut sugar which I use from time to time which is a processed sugar, but it's as unprocessed as unprocessed sugar can be. And so when I do add sweeteners to my cooking or to what I'm drinking, I try to make it as natural as possible and use as small amount as possible just to keep the effects of that added processed sugar as benign as possible. <laughs> Generally speaking, I also only use those sweeteners to try to encourage me to eat more of a really healthy food, like if I make myself a big kale salad or, well, any salad really. <laughs> I might put a tablespoon of coconut sugar on a big pile of greens and use that as part of the dressing just to make the consumption of that amount of greens more appealing to me. If I'm making myself a beverage such as a tea and I want it to taste sweet but I don't want to use any other processed sugars, what I do often add is licorice root tea which doesn't taste like licorice candy. It just adds like a really nice sweet taste to beverages without adding any calories or having the harmful effects that are associated with artificial sweeteners. However, you know, licorice root, it is an herb, it is medicinal, so it's not something that you want to use all day, every day, all the time for an extended period of time. And it can actually end up causing issues in your body, like issues with uh, blood pressure or kidney health. So while I use it occasionally, it's not something that I regularly use as part of my daily diet. I do think that I and we are just gonna have to get to a point where sweeteners don't have to be part of our lives. And we just have to accept that like, Life probably shouldn't be sickeningly sweet all the time. There are other tastes. <laughs> all right, so that is the short and sweet consensus on artificial sweeteners, questions, comments down below. As always, make better choices for yourselves. No one's gonna do it for you and take really, really good care. I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.